Folks, welcome to the Cincinnati Razorback Room and another exciting episode of Star Power Baseball with your host, Dennis. You can see the game. Boy, doesn't that look like a great game right there with the all-time Yankees and all-time Red Sox on the board. And today we're going to talk about briefly some situations with the ground ball. That's our topic of today, the times to use the ground ball card. Okay, that's what we're planning on doing today. So when we do use the ground ball card, I'm going to be flipping in and out of videos here quite a bit. When we do use the ground ball card, it's going to be when the pitcher spins a G when a batter spins a 2, a 6, or a 12. So the pitcher spins a G, the batter spins a 12, 6, or 2. Those are ground balls. That's when we'll use the ground ball card. Let's make it very quick and simple. With nobody on base, you'll spin the ground ball card and you'll spin an error spin. That's the first spin you do. You spin the card if it lands on either E space that you see right there. Either one of those E spaces, the orange space, that is an error. Then we will spin once again. It'll be a one base error. Then we will spin once again to determine who the error is on. Okay, it'll be on short second, first, or third. And when it lands on one of those, that's who you charge the error to. Put your base runner on first base. Pretty simple. That's with nobody on base. When there are runners on base, the error spin no longer takes place we will then use what we call a location spin. And the location spins are pretty simple. Okay, let's start with, let's go back to ground ball anywhere, which would be your pitcher's G. Let's pull him back up so you can see him again. Okay. Find that picture once again. All right, there he is. You can see here on Babe Adams, that big G space right there. That is a ground ball anywhere. When you have the ground ball anywhere, it'll be any of these inner circle things happening right here. Okay? Lands on shortstop is to the shortstop, second base, first, etc. If it is not a ground ball anywhere, it'll be what we call a directional ground ball. Let's look at Joe Adcock. On a 2, that's a pulled ground ball. A 12, an opposite ground ball. And a 6 is a ground ball up the middle. Okay? Let's start with a pulled ground ball. A 2. As you can see, this is divided into two sections. The right side of the infield is pink. The left side of the infield is white. Any time that the ball, that the spin lands on the right side and it's a pulled to the left side, for example, Adcock is a right-handed hitter, so his pull side is shortstop and third. If it lands on second base, that's a middle infielder and so, it'll be chosen for one of these two, either second or short. If it's pulled by a lefty, it'll go to the second baseman in any of these spaces. If it's pulled by a righty, it'll go to this shortstop if it's on either of those. Now, if it lands on first or third, it will go to that respective infielder. So if it lands on first and it's a pulled righty, it'll go to third. 
If it lands on third, a pulled righty goes to third and opposite for a left-handed batter. Now the opposite is the same way, okay? Opposite, a 12 on Joe Adcock here. That's a 12 right there. Would be an opposite ground ball, which would go either to the second baseman or the first baseman. So anytime it would land on the shortstop, it would go to the second baseman. Third baseman, it would go to the first baseman. That's your location spin. And that's the first spin that we do with runners on base. Okay? So that's pretty simple. The last thing we want to talk about, easy peasy Japanesey, is a six. That's a ground ball up the middle. Okay? On the ground ball up the middle, it'll either go to the second baseman or the shortstop, second or short. If it goes to the first base on the spin, goes to the right side middle, second base. It goes to the third base, left side middle, shortstop. Pretty simple. The other thing that we have, I gotta show it to you here, and I'll pull a card up real quick just to show you here is an example of an infielder with a range one. Middle infielder with a range one. If Joe, and you see that that's Derek Jeter, shortstop, range one. If Joe Adcock hits the six, that's a ground ball up the middle. We spin an error spin and it didn't land on an error or there's runners on base and we don't have to spin an error spin and we spin a location spin and it lands on the space directly on the space you can see it here shortstop space and you can see that Derek Jeter let's see if I can put it over here and get it better there you go it's better you can see that he's a range one. If it lands on the shortstop space, that's a single to center field. It means he didn't quite get to the ball. So that would only be on a six spin, whether there are runners on base or not is immaterial. And that's the location, the error, and the base hit on the ground ball card. One last thing. If either the first or third baseman is playing in in a bunt prevention defense. In a bunt prevention defense. And the ball is hit on the ground. A 2 or a 12. If it lands on that space, let's just take Joe Adcock again. Let's find Joe. Here he is. If it, let's say Joe hits a 12 and for some reason the first baseman was playing in and we spin the infield card ground ball card and the location spin lands on first base with the first baseman in that's a base hit to right field if the third and that would be most common on players like let me see if i can find one here a real common player that might happen on might be somebody like this who happens to be a high sacrifice rating so you might be playing the infielders in at first and third so let's suppose they're in at third base you spin a two uh, spin an error spin it didn't happen no error we spin a location spin it lands on third base not shortstop lands on third not first base on third base on a, on a two, that's a single to left field. Okay, well, I hope that answered some of your questions. That was pretty simple, pretty quick. This is Dennis with Star Power Baseball. Just put out two brand new sets, Negro League set number 15 and pre-1900 set number nine. Both of them are available for $5 each. You can give me a call. You can email me. Hit me up on the Facebook page at Star Power Baseball. Happy to help you guys out. 
Till next time, remember the spin is in.